Welcome to another how-to video from Bugspray.com. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to treat a pantry. This is a pantry that had a problem with pantry moths, what we call meal moths, Indian meal moths. Uh, there's a range of different moths that can get into a pantry. This pantry is relatively small. It's built into a wall space. It also has some weevils. And we're going to get into the details of how you should prepare these areas prior to the treatment. As you can see, everything's been vacated. But uh, more importantly, we're going to focus on all the special spots that you need to think about and focus on when you're doing your applications. Most people, if they're doing treatment, tend to miss a few key areas. And we want to make sure that these areas are definitely not missed. And this one has some tricky ones. As seen in some of our other videos, like the one treating a cabinet or a closet, a respirator would be needed if you're going to go with the FSMP. The FSMP has a strong uh, odor, and we want to have a pesticide approved or filtering type respirator when we're working in closed quarters with uh, the FSMP. The other option, if you decide that you want to go real stealthy, you would want to use the Bythor with the Mini Mister. As you're going to see, the FSMP is going to be a little tedious to apply, but it does kill all stages. So you can get eggs, pupa, larvae, adults. There'll be nothing when you're done with the treatment, assuming that you're thorough, as I'm going to demonstrate. The Bythor has the advantage of being applied by the Mini Mister, and because of that, it's very, very easy to do the application. We're talking a fraction of the time, and it's odorless. So there is a huge advantage with the Bythor, and if you're needing to treat other areas of the home, the Bythor does cost more, but you would be putting the product to use. So let's first talk a little bit about the products that were in here and what happened to them. So originally this pantry had a bunch of items in it and the homeowner was going to throw everything away. We advised them that in general, you don't have to do that. You need to focus on boxed items, even items that are in plastic, oftentimes something could be up underneath the lid. Anything box is almost always going to be a target. But to understand what we're discussing here when we talk about the food items is that oftentimes there's only one or two things that have the actual problem. And to go ahead and throw everything away, particularly if you have a lot of stuff in there that's new or just a lot of canned goods and all that just doesn't make any sense. The bottom line is one box, maybe two, that you brought home had something. And the adults were able to get out and lay eggs. And the eggs were able to crawl after they hatched into larvae and found food or some good places to hide. And problems can kind of multiply as that sequence evolves. But at the end of the day, it's highly unlikely that every single thing you have is contaminated. So throwing it all out is usually wasteful. If you want to, fine. But what we recommend is that you simply store everything in a plastic kind of see-through trash liner. And if you store them in this type of a liner, you can watch for any activity. Anything that might hatch out, you'd be able to see on the bottom. And you'd know within a couple of weeks if there was actually any problem in these items. So the food that you want to possibly save, you can store in a liner and set it aside. You're not going to put it back in the pantry within a day after treating. We like to keep the pantry open for a couple of weeks following the application just to make sure everything is purged from it. Now, as we mentioned, this pantry had a couple of different pests. It had some type of meal moth and it had some rice weevils. What's important to realize is that the treatments that I'm about to show you will work on any type of pest that you have in the pantry. So whether you have rice weevils, some type of grain borer, some type of a meal moth, 
uh, a Mediterranean flower moth or any kind of a tropical meal moth. These are all susceptible to the treatments that we're about to show you. And the process of pulling everything out is mandatory because we want to make sure that we don't have the source still in the pantry. Remember the adults that you're seeing, the adult flying moths and the crawling or flying adult beetles. There are certain beetles which can fly that can be in a pantry. So any of these, not to mention the weevils, can, when they leave the box with the infested item, crawl into little places like this and start laying eggs. And when that happens, you can have larvae crawling out and then finding crumbs or maybe another box or something that has some food on it. And then they feed, go into their pupa stages and do everything inside the closet. So the closet becomes the source. And this is why treating in the closet is very, very important. The first step, again, getting everything out, keeping anything that you want to save in a liner and keeping it out of the pantry for a good two weeks following the application. So now let's talk about the applications. As I indicated before, you can attack all of these spots with the FSMP and kill any eggs, larvae, pupa, adults that might be hiding. So let's get the FSMP out and start talking about these various places in this relatively small pantry. So you want to start on the top section and really focus all the way up to the ceiling. A lot of time meal moths will crawl all the way up to the top and form a little web, like you can see a web there. But we don't see much else. So if we clean out with a brush and remove all the webbing, it's not likely that we're going to find any cocoons up there. That being said, taking the FSMP and using it as a space spray by simply removing the straw and then just giving it a quick at the end of the treatment. In other words, we would do that very last. And the reason is because if you spray up there and you're sticking your head in here working, all the spray is going to come back down on your head. So you don't do that until the very end. This is again a very unusual pantry because notice how high the ceiling is. Most ceilings would be easy to reach. I can't come close to reach. I'm going to have to use a ladder to get up to that ceiling. And I've also noted that we have a light fixture up here. This is very interesting because there's huge cracks and crevices in there. And this is a massive issue. A light fixture like this would be a great place for virtually any type of pantry pest to focus. And when we look at that, we're going to have to climb up on the ladder, as I indicated, to get on the top side of this. The bottom side is very obvious. We have all these cracks here where we would want to get the FSMP applied. So if you're spraying these and you're looking up, you're going to need to wear goggles and preferably the face shield so that any spray that drips down is not going to get on you. In this particular case, it would be very difficult to treat because the space here by the door is very limited. However, the shelf does go up. So that's going to afford us the ability to kind of climb in there and reach up. And that's a vital area for this particular setting. Very unusual light fixture, but be aware that you need to look and see what's on this side. So let's get out the proper step ladder so we can get in there. All right, so I've gotten on a ladder. Now I'm positioned underneath the lamp. And immediately I can tell you that we have a gap above the lamp. So we want to get our straw in here and we want to spray across this entire length of the lamp, just with it's probably just about one second across there. But we also have small gaps here by the actual, where the light bulb goes in. This light bulb was not in place, so it's not in use. We would also want to spray up into the ballast area by giving a little spritzes here. So like a tsst, and then a tsst, tsst, 
Remember, all this time I'm wearing a respirator and a face shield, so nothing's coming back to me. I would also want to treat underneath here, as I showed you before. So we would start on one side and then just all the way across. That's going to take care of anything that's in there. The ballast, we don't even know if this thing works. It's been here. It's not been functioning. It's not been used. We can't even find a switch for it. So as far as I'm concerned, taking it down would be something I would do, but the homeowner is reluctant to do that at this time. So we're going to have to work with what we've got and get it properly treated. And then we want to change our attention to the molding that surrounds the door because this molding has a gap up here. So we want to give this a quick tss, tss, all the way down to the ground level. And the reason why is because all of these pests coming out are most likely to fall down or move down. The only exception again would be the flying ones. They're more likely to go up towards the top. But the side here, this molding, is a huge area, huge problem. And we want to get every bit of it. If you can't see clearly that there's a gap, uh, then what you can do is take the straw off and just give it a misting. Now, once I've gotten the frame treated and we've got the lamp treated above, we can change our attention to the shelving. As I've already shown you, these shelvings go up. But if you look here, you can see there's a hollow chamber. And that chamber is a problematic location. Any of these mounting points, actually, uh, for these types of shelves are a huge issue. So you want to focus on the gap where they mount to the wall. So a quick and then a quick and then you would want to just in there. These mounting brackets back here, same thing. Notice how the metal sits on that little hook. Well, it's loose. It's not tight. There's actually a gap there. Classic place for larvae to uh, end up. That's where they like to go. So we want to If I was treating, I would have a napkin or a paper towel or a tissue. Anything I was running down, I would just kind of hit it with the tissue just to keep it dry because it's likely going to be some drippage. Perfectly normal. And then again, we have this side, so we want to hit it. And then inside the chamber. The actual metal shelves themselves are surprisingly clean. Homeowner has done an amazing job of cleaning them. In fact, I'd say even these must have been clean. But I'm still concerned about these hinges or hooks, I should say, what, that support each shelf. And as a result, I would treat each one of these. To save on time, I'm not going to show you each one as they're treated or how they should be treated. I've already demonstrated on the top one. So let's just move down to the bottom section of the pantry and take a close look down here because this is a very other unique situation. We have in this pantry carpeting and carpeting is just a nightmare when it comes to stored product pests because they crawl. So we have all these gaps. Look at this, this is crazy. We have this seal here. We have the seal here and on the doorway, look at that gap right there, pest inside there. Uh, we have obviously a crack in the caulking down here. This would be a focal point. So let's just start here and let's, instead of getting caught up with all the possible places, the first thing you would do is start at the top of the molding and work your way down. So a quick tss, and then the same thing here, tss, and then the same thing here. Now that's pretty tight, but I'll still give it a, a spritz. Tss, same thing here. Tss, now let's focus on the crack, or I should say the seam of the carpet where it goes underneath the actual molding. So for that, we're going to saturate a good tss. 
If you notice, I'm holding in one spot for a couple, three seconds. All these gaps, any kind of drugstore beetle, sawtooth grain weevil or beetle, uh, all the grain borers, we're talking rice weevils, the list goes on and on. All of them love these big gaps. So you, there's a huge one here. Look at this thing. I mean, you could just spray for probably five, ten seconds. Here, again, very important location. And then again, this floorboard, or I should say, kind of like door saddle. Uh, it's like a marble because they have tile floors and there's a gap underneath it. Classic places for these pests. All right, we've hit virtually everything, but the carpet, the carpet is a potential hiding spot. Why? Because look at the nap, it's down there deep. And that's a tough one. It's very difficult to get the FSMP down there. You could literally remove the straw and just saturate it for an area this small, which is approximately one, two, not even three feet. It's right around three feet. We'll say it's three feet by two feet. So we're looking at six square feet. To get down there with the aerosol, once again, you would have to remove the straw and then use it kind of like a spot spray where you would just spray it directly down onto the carpeting. So if I was going to treat that using the FSMP, which I already mentioned I was going to use it that way to treat the uh, space above the closet. I would go like this. I'd get right up on the right up on the carpeting and I'd give it a good So I've treated about one third of it. Then I'll hit the next third. And then I hit the last section. All right, at this point, I, I would have confidence that the treatment will have gotten down to where it needs to go. And even if it didn't, it would work its way down just from gravity alone. But the last part I do would be, as I indicated before, where I would spot treat the molding and I would start low and I would go out to the top. So it, and I would do this side. And then the very last bit would be that area up there. So using it almost like a can of hairspray, I would reach up. Now at this point, I would say I have thoroughly treated this little pantry and the FSMP would kill all stages. It would do so within a very short period of time probably within an hour, uh, certainly within a day. Doesn't mean that you should put everything back in here. In fact, we recommend keeping the pantry empty at least two weeks so that you can see if anything is still crawling in there. So now we've got the mini mist there and I'm gonna show you how to treat the same areas, but we're gonna do this a little bit di different sequence. In this case, we're gonna focus on the shelves first and then the very bottom and then we'll do the top areas. And the reason for that is because when we start treating the top, everything is gonna fall down. So we wanna make sure that we're prepared for that. For these areas, it's gonna be this easy, literally this fast. Turn it on. Just did one row right there. Go ahead and hit this one. And that's it. Got that one done. 
Let's do the next one. It's so easy. So I've just treated two of them. Now if you apply too much and you see too much running, use your little tissue or paper towel to wipe up any excess. But if it's properly done, there's going to be just a light mist on here which will dry within a couple of hours. And it will intercept anything that's hatching. It's not strong and penetrating like the FSMP, so you will have eggs hatching. However, the larvae will be susceptible to the bithor and die off. So the cycle can be broken. This process of using the mini mister would be done on all the shells. And then when we got to the bottom, we would do the same thing, focusing on those key areas. Now, if you ideally, because of what we're looking at here, I would still recommend the FSMP underneath here. But assuming that you didn't have carpeting and just tiles here, if that's true, the mini mister would be fine and this is how fast it would be to treat. And we're done. Now, of course, we do have the carpet. So if we were going to saturate the carpet, we would work it over like this. And as you can see, it's a much easier process. There's no odor. It's working its way down to the important areas of the nap of the carpet. And we would have all the carpeting treated. If you had the tile floor down here, like the rest of the kitchen area, then you wouldn't even have to treat the center area. You would just focus your attention on the baseboard. Now lastly, we do have to think about the frame of the door. And we would do that by treating up. Pleating that on the other side. And then the last steps would be treating the, all the way up to the top in case there's any developing meal moths or any crawling pests that made its way up there. And then what we would end up doing is turning the unit this way. So we could do the application standing outside and pointing it up just like that, hitting the light fixture as we move it back and forth. It, Crazy as it sounds, it will still be effective because this little unit can shoot four or five feet. So let's turn it on and get this done. And then let's turn it the other direction. Basically pointing, it, pointing upwards and kind of towards us. And that would be it. So we've now gotten the entire pantry treated using the mini mister and it took a fraction of the time compared to using the fsmp the net result is going to be similar in other words the bithor will take care of all cycles and the problem will be resolved as time goes by because it takes a day or two to kill adults and larvae it's highly likely you will see bugs for up to a week following the application that's perfectly normal but give it two weeks the same as we recommend for the FSMP, and then you can start putting items back in. In summary, pantry pests can be frustrating. Many times people have them, they get rid of everything, and they continue to have the problem, and they don't know what they're doing wrong. It almost always boils down to a spot, a location in the pantry that is generating new ones, uh, a place where adults were able to Lay some eggs and the eggs were able to prosper. And now you have cycles going through and occurring down in corners underneath the base molding, maybe behind the door frame, a life fixture, one of the hinges. All of these are great places for these guys to thrive. And if you're not treating them as I've just described, any one of these locations could give you an ongoing problem that would just play out over the course of years. So if you want to get your pantry properly treated, follow the details of this video, get everything out, use the FSMP to thoroughly treat 
or the Bythor in the mini mist there and you can knock the problem out for good. So thanks for watching my how-to video from bugspray.com.